Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the counselor's office. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor, and we are live in the counselor's office. We are doing something new on the channel. We are doing the first Descendant Dev Notes. That's right. I've not done these on the channel, nor have I actually done anything that has to do with the first Descendants. I've been doing this week in Destiny for so long. Now we're doing this week in the first Descendants, or at least this patch notes, should I say. So, Season 1 is around the corner, and we have the preview for Season 1 Invasion. Let's jump in and see what it's all about. Greetings, Descendants. This is the director of the first Descendant, Minazikzioko-ju. I know I butchered that name. I apologize to you. In this ne dev notes, I would like to share a preview of the Season 1 update. Please check the major update details along with the weekly updated content schedule for Season 1. Just when you thought Corel's Legion had retreated, they're coming back with more powerful tactical weapons. The first Descendant Season 1 update, Invasion, features a new episode along with the Invasion events, new Descendant Haley, Ultimate Freyna, Ultimate Weapons, new Intercept Battle Deathstalker, looks really cool, and a season-exclusive progression system called Inversion Reinforcement. Season 1 Invasion will be released throughout three updates starting August 29th, offering a variety of content with new challenges and rewards. Okay, so we are getting three updates. Okay. They said that we were supposed to get a mid-season update. Uh, I don't know if that's changed. I guess we'll keep reading to find out. The first Ascendant is planning to provide seasonal updates, and Invasion is the first step of this journey. We'll explore the secrets of Descendants and unravel the story of Ingress as we journey through the seasons. You will discover new weapons. New Descendants will join the war and Descendants will become more powerful. Of course, the season will progress in a way that preserves the progression of your Descendants and your collectibles. Corel's new weapon. Corel has prepared a new tactical weapon for revenge. The tactical weapon forward from the ancestors technology discovered by Amon is the Volgus Legion's new strategic strategy against the Descendants. We've seen these in the, the little preview clips that they've posted. Looks like pusses on something. When the invasion season begins, the invasion event will occur daily in two of the hard infiltration operation dungeons. Okay. So it looks like it's daily for two days. Or there's two of them. Uh, in the dungeon where the invasion has begun, you can start by selecting infiltration operation or invasion. And the invasion can be cleared twice per day for each day. What? So the main event can only be done twice daily you can't farm it out so you can't continue to play said content for the season are they trying to compete with bungie here with the worst time time gates ever two 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 at least bungie lets you have destiny content like right off the rip first like the main activities right you can do that main activities as much as you want, but you're you're telling me the main reason for the season is locked to two days. Okay, let's keep reading before I go on a tangent. <laughs> Invasion dungeons will put your skills and wit to the test. Man, that sounds great. To hold back the descendants, Corel has built a defense system with different mechanisms for each legion. These dungeons are solo challenges that feature different routes, puzzles, and strategies from normal dungeons where your objective is to fend off the invasion as quickly as impossible. Also, speedrunning. So everything people ever wanted, it sounds like, from like Destiny, and they encourage speedrunning. But it's only for two times a day. So you get to do four runs of invasion. So you get four a day. Okay. New Descendant Haley Scotts, once a guerrilla unit supply soldier who gained fame as a legendary sniper, Haley is now the newest member of the Descendant Corps. Not only can she take out enemies from a distance with her anti-material -mat sniper cannon, but she can also take them out with her cheeks. I mean, sorry. Um, she can also rapidly decrease her body temperature to spew chill when emotions run high. While Haley is an admirer of Viesa who can manipulate chill at will, and as a cold-blooded sniper on the battle, she's also a warm-hearted hero who loves to make love. I mean, snow crystals and bring smiles to men. I mean, children's faces. 
cryo round instantly fires a cryo round that automatically tracks the enemy. Oh my god. Deals damage and inflicts Kyra, uh, cryo, which deals additional damage along with Haley's firearm damage. That's kind of cool. Storm Snare fires a freezing beam that unleashes a chill vortex around you and knocks enemies back. Inflicts cryo on enemies that take damage. Neat. Cold Fury. Haley's movement speed gradually decreases, but her firearm and skill critical hit rate firearm penetrates all sig increase significantly okay so like if you're using a sniper it sounds like this will go well zenith replaces Haley's weapon with her unique weapon anti-material sniper cannon penetration of the anti-material sniper cannon and fire attack greatly increase and deal additional chill skill damage recovery uh sorry recovers mp upon successfully attacking weak points and decreases the cooldown the more bullets you have remain remaining when the school the skills end Inversion Reinforcer for Seasonal Progression. Descendants experience a change in their RK as they've come into contact with Ironhearts multiple times. Their RK begin to draw energy from a destroyed Ironheart. Embracing this energy as a source of strength, the Descendants now gain new abilities through Inversion Reinforcements. So this is like the, the seasonal th buff. Like Diablo does this, Destiny does it with like artifact mods. Hunt improves the Descendants' basic stats. Attribute improves... It, um, improves their attribute resistance, recovery, recovery, obviously survival, increases defense under certain conditions, apparently. Uh, season, receive an effect that is useful for inversion dungeons. Okay. Which is only going to be good for like four times a day. So like, eh. Ah, uh, Freyna's Awakening, Ultimate Freyna. Dude, my girl. I, I'm excited to play her mission, but I'm also excited to get her, her ultimate form. Like, oh, I mained Freyna for the, like the beginning after I got off Sharon. And I don't regret it. She may not be like S tier, but she's definitely A tier. And yeah. Oh, love to get my ve Venom mommy on. Still trapped in the day of the, the Room Zero incident, Freyna's trauma has stopped her time. In season one, we follow the story of Freyna, who continues to grieve alone in an Ascendant exclusive story. You'll explore the inner mind of a crestfallen hero who's trapped in guilt and self-hatred for su surviving alone after falling failing to save her love and comrades. Will she be able to overcome her trauma? You will then go to meet Ultimate Fre Freyna, who broke through her limits. There are also exclusive modification modules for her. Dope. I hope they're I hope they they're modules that focus on her four because I really want to push it over so you can really use her for boss fights to like S tier times. Future Ultimate Descendants will be added with the seasonal updates, and as the Descendant stories and the first Descendant lores expand. After Season 1 Ultima Freyna, the next update to the Ultimate Descendants will launch se uh, sequentially, starting with the initial Descendants to join Corpse. Okay, I, I, that's a, lot, a mouthful. New Ultimate Weapons! Excava, a powerful and versatile Ultimate Weapon. This assault arrives with this update, also acquires a free, also acquirable as a free Battle Pass reward. Excava charges voltage when attacking enemies. And uses the charge voltage to fire grenades. So Bunny's gonna love this. It's a new toy to play with for Bunny. Frost Watcher, acquirable through gameplay. This scout rifle reduces an enemy's chill resistance, increases your chill damage each time you hit the enemy at long range. It is a perfect weapon for Viesa and Haley, who uses chill attribute skills. The looming threat over Ingress, Death Stalker, Intercept Battle. The Colossi still threatens Ingress from behind a dimensional wall. And it's time to meet the most powerful Colossa, Colossus of Season 1, Deathstalker. It's great that we actually got a new, like, enemy. It isn't just, like, a regurgitated. Like, Gluttony was fine, but let's be honest, he was just a copy of Devourer. Uh, more affordable than, formidable than any other Coloss, Colossus you've intercepted. You must jump back into the void to protect Ingress from this menace. Solve the mystery shrouded in the dark. And intercept Death Sucker. So there's gonna be some mechanics we're gonna definitely gonna solve. And the community, uh, if it's anything like Gluttony, the community is gonna struggle for like months to figure out how to beat it. Highest difficulty infiltration operation in ETAO. In season one, the highest difficulty of the infiltration operations will be added. It's a proving ground to test and polish your optimized builds. Form a team or challenge yourself to more difficult infiltration operations in public matchmaking. Prove the strength of the Descendants and acquire loot that can only be obtained in more difficult infiltration operations. So I've got everything, so do I get like better odds at loot? Like I'm confused here because honestly, 
I've unlocked 100% of the game. Now, do I have everything at level five? No, because a lot of those weapons are kind of not worth it. So there's only certain guns right now that are worth maxing out skill-wise, but uh, not all of them. Along with this, a mysterious merchant, ETAO, visits Albion. Every time he visits, he shows up with a variety of products that can be purchased with exclusive currency, which, okay, so that's, that's Barrow from Warframe. Like, it sounds like Zer, but the fact that it's exclusive currency, that is 100% one for one for Barrow from Warframe, which is fine. Like, people are like, oh, they're just copying Warframe. Yeah, well, you know, I like Warframe, and this gives me two different games that are similar, so I can enjoy both. Uh, along with this, a mysterious merchant, uh, with each visit, he brings different products. Since he visits Albion with blueprints for descendants and ultimate weapons, and occasionally hard to find consumables, don't miss out on visiting ETA. Zero. Yeah, so Barrow. Granted, if they give you like enduring legacy parts, which is probably one of the more annoying ones uh, to get, and maybe even what? Afterglow, which is a good, one of the best snipers in the game right now. Like, there you go. All right. Season one invasion update schedule. All content will be updated sequentially during the invade. Wait. So, wait. I know you're, some of the date, like you can see the dates, but so there's three updates for three months. There's no, there's no like direct mid updates. Okay. So releasing on the beginning of the season, we get the new descendant Haley and Haley skins invasion dungeon. Okay. That makes sense. Inversion reinforcement. That makes sense. Inversion Season Battle Pass, Ultimate Weapon, Excava. Then you have to wait another month for the Deathstalker. Okay, I can kind of get that if this is like a really hard boss. Maybe it, they want the goal is to do like the the artifact thing or whatever the the inversion reinforcement. Maybe they're trying to like hey. You know, gluttony's hard, but hey, if you do inversion, this will make that boss easier. But also the new boss, if you go in raw, then you might get clapped. So maybe there's a reason for that. I can maybe give them a pass. Ultimate weapon frost watcher, which is probably tied to the death stalker. So that makes sense. New ultimate skins and ultimate descendant exclusive spawn effects. It's just cosmetics, whatever. Uh, and then the third update. We have to wait three months for Ultimate Freyna and her exclusive story. Why? Wh Ultimate Freyna modifications, so the mods come with her. Haley's mod, you're telling me that we have mods specifically for Haley and you have to wait three months to get it? Oh my God, they're pulling a bungee. No. Out of everything, you were doing great. You were doing great, Nexon, and then you followed Bungie's footsteps on time gating. No, you took the worst part of Bun Destiny. You're like, we are, we really took inspiration for some Destiny. Like we let, like this is not the inspiration you want. Go back. Do not. This is the worst part. Holy crap! And for people out there trying to defend, you know, time trip feed, like there's morons in in the Destiny community that desperately cling to the drip feeding mechanics because apparently uh if they're incompetent and capable of not consuming all content at one go they say thank you we love time gates because it keeps me from playing the entire content in one run like that's a you issue buddy like the, if you need someone to put in artificial time gates to keep you from blowing through the content and you're okay with that because you're incompetent? That's a you issue. Don't punish everyone else. Listen, if everyone else wants to burn through the content, they have no right to complain, and you can point that out to them. Like, it is objectively better for a player population to have all the, con the content out in front. Like, every other game that has seasons, they may have, like, a mid-season update, like Call of Duty does. But to literally put in, like, hey... We're splitting up the season in the three parts. You know who's doing that right now? Bungie, Destiny. And you know what's happened to their player base since they've done that? Let's go to Steam charts. Charts, Destiny 2. 
this is what happens when you do things that the players don't like. They go away. If you don't want to end up like Destiny and have such backlash from the community who's just leaving, don't pull a bungee. They are not, you do not want to copy this. This is exactly what Bungie's doing with episodes. They're time gating in a way no one wants. Except it's not just story, it's actual content that like uh, rewards. Like you're gonna advertise, hey, one of our big sellers for the season is Ultimate Freyna. Sorry, you don't, and the, what doesn't make sense. Listen, I can, if you wanna say, hey, here's a new character and we wanna do what like we did with Luna, where we put her like at the end of the season or the preseason, we want to do that. Okay, sure. But why are we making it to where the new character you you unlock her and then you have to wait three months for it like to modify her? Because no one's gonna waste time trying to build a kit for this character if they don't even have the mods. New ultimate mods, whatever. Highest difficulty infiltration operations and the new vendor. I can get see the new vendor taking like a whatever, right? But why are like these, why is this? That's content. Why can't people just, why can't that be like on release? Why can't the most, the challenging content that people want to grind and play? Why is that locked three months from now? You might as well just not even put it on the, on the, as the things that you're doing for the season. You might as well just make it a surprise at that point because it seems stupid. And I know I'm ranting and raving, but no one likes time gates. No one likes drip feeding. This is very artificial. It is pro company. It's anti player. It's obviously meant to make artificial, literal artificial retention. And it, 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 it's what's sad, and it really is sad, guys. It's really sad because Nexon has done an amazing job of taking player feedback, and I hope the community really gives them feedback on this and they revert some of these changes or some of the this, this schedule. Like, I really do hope they, re like, this needs to be immediately released and this needs to be immediately released, in my opinion. The new mods need to be absolutely released with the new character, and we should have the highest, the hardest, like, the main selling point to continue to play should be I can ground out and play the hardest content. Not, hey, wait three months to finally be able to make things hard. Again, people are going to be like, oh, well, uh, people are always upset about always burning through content and then they never have anything to do. And that is the dumbest argument where is, there is truth to it. There are people that do. But there is no benefit to time gating. How someone else plays has no impact on you. If someone burns through the content, that doesn't impact you. It says more about you than them because you're the one like, yes, I love time gating because I'm incompetent to manage my own time. And the same thing for the people complaining about it, right? Obviously, if they burn through it, then that's them issue. But to say like, it's a good thing, like there's fundamentally no good reason for the players that things are time gated. It only benefits the company. Which is sad because I was gonna play, I play the game anyway, so why do you have to like punish me? Because now it makes me not want to play as much. Like if I know that I'm not gonna get that much content, I'm grinding out all the character levels in preparation, trying to get uh, mastery rank 26. But if I'm not really getting any of the new, new stuff, I'm gonna pump the brakes and I'm gonna play less now because I know that there's no point into rushing. There's no point in actually trying to play as much. Like I can, I feel like I can step away now from the first Ascendant, play the new thing, do a couple of inversion dungeons and then get off for the day. Which, I mean, I guess I'll go play Warframe. I've been wanting to catch up on that. Just, this is not it. Time gating is not it. It is the worst thing that they could have took from Bungie. Now, please, we got additional improvements. Please do something different. I'm poking you with a stick, asking you, please do something different. Do something better. Please, for love, Nexon. You've been doing so well with the community. You've responded so good to the feedback to the, of the community. Please tell me you made some changes that the, the community has asked for. Let's see. Finally, here's the news on the improvement that will be applied with season one on August 29th. 
Void Fragments and Fusion Reactor Loop Improvement, which has been my biggest criticism, that it is boring and it is unrewarding, in my opinion. It's the worst part of the game. It has been improved that so playing Void Fragments once on hard difficulty now grants enough sh Void Shards to use the Void Fusion Reactor once. Oh my god. Oh, that is such a good change because now it feels like if I run one time, if I have 10, 10 patterns, I know I just need to run it 10 times instead of 30 times because I'm mix matching my stupid patterns or my stupid points or the shards, I mean. Consequentially, the amount of void shards rewarded in special operations has now been increased. That's interesting. That's passive. Like that's going to matter more now that it's, pa it's passive. Additionally, void shards required for fusion reactors have now been consolidated into a single type. Oh my god. Now the same type of void shards will drop from both the void fragment and the fusion reactor within the same battlefield. That is so nice. Oh my god. So you just, what, need one or two? Do you still need two or at least one? If they just make it to one and you just always get that one, oh, that is so nice. It's all in one, like, it was all already kind of like that, but that is such a W change. This change enhances the convenience of farming void shards and optimizes the monster placement for representative void fragments of each attribute. Finally, the fusion reactor now requires void shards when the reconstruction device, rather than the start of the mission. Yeah, there'll be times where people's stupid little boss would chase you across the map, which they need to fix that, by the way. And I would be like, okay, I've got to kill this stupid thing or it's going to kill me and I want to do it. And then it just takes shards out, even though I don't have the pattern to do it. So now they're changing that. That's been, that's been, you only have to use shards specifically when you actually, uh, you unlock a pattern or try to, uh, that's great. That's a good switch. Easy fix. Hard infiltration operation improvements. As previously announced, random options will be replaced with preset selection. Ooh. The preset offers three options, 125, 250, zero. And the descendants who choose the same preset can play together in public matchmaking. In addition, to prevent the number of types of matchmaking pool from growing indiscriminately, descendants who selected the same infiltration operation will now be matched together regardless of their selected rewards. Instead, the global effects that were applied based on the selected rewards will be removed. Okay. Lastly, the timed occupation mission will be removed from the hard infiltration operations and replaced with extermination battle where the time can be reduced based on the descent skill. Thank God. Oh, occupation missions are so bad because there were some that would make it like 16 minutes with a group or like by it solo, like, or not 16, but like 14 minutes. And I can think of several on top of my head, but I don't know the names of them. That's a W. Socket type saving feature improvements. Uh, I'm going to summarize this. Essentially, what it is is if you use socket types in setting one, you have two and you have three, it, it crosses over, but you can ch now choose different uh, different ones. For example, the descent changes an Alamite socket to Malak socket. You can easily choose between the Alamite in that socket afterward. Additionally, the socket type applied to loadout one can also be used for two and three, allowing to grant multiple socket types only to the slots that require multiple socket types depending on your build. So you can use one and then you can use another setting, setting two, and use the same ones or you can change, make different ones. You can choose a different, for like different builds. That is huge. Even Warframe doesn't do that. Like Warframe does not do that where it crosses over. So this is such a huge improvement and they, they're they learning from some failures from Warframe, in my opinion. Descendant uh, balance adjustments. All right. Jaber. Jaber, I've heard, is not that good. Maybe he will be better with these buffs. Uh, turret has been improved to apply stats such as skill power modifier and additional attack and will be able to be enhanced by Descendant modules. Additionally, Jaber's turret sync skill has been adjusted to apply the turret Jaber has summoned. And if the turret engineer modification module is equipped, the summon turret has improved... To create an area okay blair's pit master skill has been improved to have more enhanced effects based on the number of flame zones the duration of blaze up skill has been increased and the mp cost has been reduced when using the extinguished skill the flame zone will no longer be retrieved instead 
The taste of aggression effect will stack based on the number of flame zones. The damage of the burn taste skill has been increased and skill button input feature has been added to allow counseling the, the skill mid use. If it if it's the like flame flower thing, yes, please. We should be able to counsel that. It's so annoying to be stuck in that animation. Additionally, the max stacks of the incendiary bomb modification module has been increased and the performance of deadly cuisine skill has been enhanced when the classic chef modification module is equipped. Ajax, we'll see if that improves Blair. I don't know. I like literally, is it going to be better than Ajax? Let's find out. Or not Ajax, uh, Lepic, sorry. Talking about Ajax, orbital barrier and hypercube skill are now affected by attribute resistance, making them stronger. Great, because hypercube, like if you go into uh, literally gluttony, he just slaps you. Like Ajax is essentially useless, in my opinion, in, in uh, gluttony. So if this increases the strength of it overall, this is a W. And even maybe even in like the, the top tier hard operations, this will be even good, like even good. Even better. Uh, making them stronger. The body enhancement modification module increases HP, defense, and shield when using these skills. Void energy will always recover 100%, allowing the use of enhanced skill more often. Additionally, the void charge modification module will allow the void walk skill to be stacked, and the void walk and expulsion skill have been modified to increase damage based on defense. When using enhanced skill, the cooldown will now reset. You know, this sounds like now, now's that you can be able to make your Ajax a tanky boy, and you can also make him an attack boy. With, like, you can use a cube boy or a diff, uh, an attack boy. And I'm excited because I really like Ajax. I think he's really, really cool looking and just like a dope looking descendant. I like his kid. We'll see if he's actually viable. Various improvements. First, the feature to designate random options have been added to the external component junk filter reactor. This allows you to conveniently designate items that don't have the intended random options as junk. Addi additionally, dismantling items in combat is now... Oh my god! Thank you! That is probably the best change in my opinion. Outside of voids, like literally, my inventory gets filled and you can't do anything about it because you're in combat and it's so annoying getting spammed. You can't do it. Or if you're barely in the encounter area, you get the red ring. And even though you're, there's no enemies around or you're not fighting, it's like, no, you can't do that. You can't delete that. You can't delete that. This is a quality of life that I love to see. Shapes display to show your preferred item attachment can now be designated using a variety of shapes, enabling you to manage them with different shapes according to their uses. A favorite feature has been added to research menu and the acquisition inf information of the applied item will now be shown on the map. Huge. Uh, other updates include additional improvements to icon information display that was included in version 1.07, a feature to disable voice playback during hard missions, thank God, the addition of visual information to the encrypted vault, and various improvements. Don't miss the first Descendant first season starting August 29th. I think all the... I, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't get a buff to Kyle and Esmo. Like, what do those guys actually do? I'm still wondering. Uh, overall, though, these are great. This, the, the, what's sad is the actual season stuff itself is probably the most disappointing part. I'm more excited for the general quality of life changes, but I'm disappointed in the season itself. I don't know. I've ranted enough on it, so I'll leave it to you guys. But if you've never played Destiny 2, let me tell you, time gating is not fun and it's not good at all. I just, it just, I really hope that if they do fold on something, at least they give Haley on release her modifications and the the highest difficulty, like, at least that gives me something to do in between invasion dungeons. Like, I would love to farm and play highest difficulty infiltrations. Like, that just, that overall should be part of the release, in my opinion. If you want to have, hold the cookie of Ultimate Freyna, like you did Luna, like, hey, mid-update, even though this seems like the last update, of this season but if you want to do that then hey you know what i'm i'm willing even though it upsets me as a friend of me i'm okay with it the same thing with ultimate mods and the 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 trader like who cares everything else like even in mid-season like i get or yeah i think it's mid-season september 26 next month yeah like this is fine i think this is all fine i'm okay with this but like two of these things need to go right here at launch if they were to fix that I'm a little bit okay with some of the time gatingness. 
overall disappointed that some of the main important things are at the tail end and not the beginning. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below. This has been my first First Descendant patch notes. Uh, uh, a sound off if you like to me, if you would like me to do more reviews. Man, I just can't speak. It's been a long day. I've been working back in school and I, I just can't speak. I've been shouting and chasing kids all day. That's what happens when you work in elementary school. You you learn you lose your will to speak English. Yay. Until next time, by the way, I love those kids. Until next time, don't forget to be the best version of yourself and game out. Huzzah.